The 25th of December ranks not just as the most anticipated day in the year, but also the most celebrated. Popularly known as Christmas, this day brings the world together in a bond of love and joy. But how did we come about the day? Was it really the day Jesus Christ, the Christian Savior of the world, was born? Or is there more to it than what meets the eye? An underlying story that we are not allowed to talk about. Join us in today's video as we explore the origin of Christmas and the stories untold. Let's begin. The popular narrative. There are many sides to a story, just as there are different sides to a coin. Christmas is one of the oldest festivals ever. Beginning in the fourth century in Rome during the reign of the first Christian emperor, Constantine. The original narrative, which we'll be looking at soon, is that the day was set aside to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, the son of the Christian God and the savior of all mankind. However, that narrative has been given a significant tweak. Christmas, or what I would call Xmas, has now become a secular holiday celebrated by both Christian and non-Christians. The secular narrative, which is now a better explanation than other origins we will discuss here, is often devoid of any Christian elements. In fact, if you were a fan of the Harry Potter franchise, you would remember that Christmas was celebrated at Hogwarts. The icon of the Christmas secular holiday is the mythical Santa Claus, a heavily bearded man who collects wishes from children and on Christmas Eve delivers gifts to children of the world. The popular narrative, as is popular speculation, began in the 20th century as a sales technique. Did it work? Well, that question seems to answer itself. A lot of people will buy gifts for their loved ones after all. The significance of Christmas from the selected date to the merrymaking transcends commercial purposes. This holiday has been subject of both theological as well as classical debate from time immemorial. Is Christmas really a Christian holiday? Was it recorded in the Bible that Jesus was born on the 25th of December? Or is there more explicit explanation for the whole story? Let us take a look at the origin from different angles. First, the biblical origin. The Nativity. The Nativity of Jesus, also known as the birth of Christ, refers to the biblical account of the birth of Jesus Christ as described in the Gospel of Matthew and Luke and the New Testament of the Christian Bible. Typically, the story involves Mary and Joseph, who journeyed to Bethlehem for the census. Unable to find lodging in an inn, they took refuge in a stable where Jesus was born and laid in a manger. Angels were said to have announced the birth to shepherds in the field nearby, who then visited the newborn Messiah. According to the Gospel of Matthew, wise men from the east followed an extraordinary star to Bethlehem. They came bearing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh for the newly born Savior of the world. The Nativity holds deep significance within Christian theology as the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies regarding the coming of the Messiah and the incarnation of God in human form. Not only does it hold a very important place in Christian teachings, the Christian Nativity is also the foundational event in Christianity as a huge symbol of hope, salvation, and the divine presence entering the world. It is also the bedrock of the Christian celebration done on the 25th of December annually. Nativity scenes, often depicted in art, plays, and displays during the Christmas season, serve as a visual representation for this pivotal moment in Christian belief. From the perspective of Christians, the holiday of Christmas evolved from the observances of Jesus' birth. Over time, as things are susceptible to changing, the celebration gradually incorporated various cultural customs and traditions. The incorporation of various pagan traditions into Christmas, such as decorating trees, exchanging gifts, and lighting of candles, might raise controversy among certain Christian circles who emphasize a more religiously pure celebration. Before we go into the forbidden origin of Christmas, be sure to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to the Planet of Amazement, and smash that bell icon to get more exciting content as soon as it is posted. Have you done that? Let's continue! The Forbidden Origins of Christmas There are basically three origins of Christmas that are not really talked about, or like he who must not be named, talking about them is considered a taboo. Well, to appreciate the colors and value of something, one must have an intricate knowledge about that thing. So, instead of accepting all that the preacher says, why not probe the existing frontiers? 
The first of these taboo origins is the Slavic origins. The origin of Christmas is intertwined with ancient pagan traditions that celebrated the winter solstice and the rebirth of the sun. In Slavic cultures, the winter solstice was marked by festivals such as Koliada or Koled. These festivals honored the changing of seasons and return of longer days. With the spread of Christianity in Slavic regions, these pagan festivities were gradually integrated into Christian practices. The introduction of Christianity brought the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, which was merged with existing customs and traditions of the pagans. Over time, this fusion of pagan and Christian elements evolved into the Christmas celebration observed in Slavic cultures. In some Slavic countries, unique customs and rituals associated with Christmas emerged, such as the preparation of special foods, folk performances, and the use of traditional symbols. For instance, in countries like Russia, the Ukraine, and Poland, Christmas is celebrated on January 7th according to the Julian calendar, which was used by the Orthodox Church. The Slavic origin of Christmas reflects a blending of ancient pagan traditions with Christian beliefs, resulting in a rich tapestry of customs and practices that are distinctively observed in various Slavic cultures during the festive season. This is not all. One of the popular sobriquets for the Christmas season is the Yuletides. Well, that name did not just evolve out of thin air. In fact, Yule was an ancient Germanic festival celebrated by various Germanic peoples and Norse pagans. It marks the winter solstice, typically occurring around December 21st, and symbolizes the rebirth of the sun and the lengthening of days after the darkest period of the year. During Yule, festivities varied among different Germanic tribes, but common elements, including feasting, drinking, burning a Yule log, and decorating with evergreen boughs to symbolize life in the midst of winter. It was a time for community gatherings, storytelling, and rituals to ensure a prosperous year ahead. With the spread of Christianity across Europe, many Yule traditions were absorbed into Christmas celebrations. Customs like the Yule log, evergreen decorations, feasting, and the emphasis on warmth and light during the darkest times of the year were integrated into the observance of Christmas. Like the Slavics today, some modern pagan and neo-pagan groups also celebrate Yule as a festival marking the winter solstice, embracing ancient customs and emphasizing themes of rebirth, renewal, and the return of light. If the Slavic and Germanic origin of Christmas do not intrigue you, wait till you hear about what the Romans have to say about Christmas, the date, celebration, and the significance. The Roman origin of Christmas is linked to several ancient Roman pagan festivals that were celebrated around the winter solstice. Worthy of note is the fact that all three taboo origins of Christmas are somehow connected to the winter solstice. Is this a mere coincidence, or, in the words of the famous HBO series, Game of Thrones, is winter really winter coming? Is coming? One of the most notable festivals during this time was Saturnalia, dedicated to the agricultural god Saturn, which was observed from around December 17th to December 23rd. Saturnalia was a time of feasting, gift-giving, merrymaking, and a temporary overturning of social norms, where masters and slaves would sometimes switch roles temporarily. Another Roman festival, Dies Natalis Solis Invicti, the birthday of the unconquered sun, celebrated the rebirth of the sun as the days began to lengthen after the winter solstice around December 25th. With the rise of Christianity and efforts to convert pagans to Christianity, some early Christian leaders chose to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ around the same time as these pagan festivals. By adopting the existing traditions and symbols associated with the Saturnalia and other Roman celebrations, Christianity aimed to make the transition to the new faith more acceptable and familiar to the Roman population. Over time, Christmas assimilated some of the customs and practices from these Roman pagan festivals, such as feasting, gift giving, and the use of lights and decorations. The date of December 25th, originally associated with pagan festivals, gradually became widely accepted as the Christian celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, resulting in a blending of Roman pagan traditions with Christian beliefs and the observance of Christmas. Origin of Santa Claus Considering the origin of Christmas will not be complete without talking about the origin of the symbol of Christmas, Santa Claus. Songs have been sung about him, stories written, movies acted, and children have been made to believe he is real. But did we ever have a Santa Claus, or is it another mythical figure history has given life to? 
The origin of Santa Claus can be traced back to various historical and mythical figures, blending different traditions over centuries. One of the primary influences of the modern depiction of Santa Claus is Saint Nicholas, a Christian saint born in the 3rd century of Patara, part of modern-day Turkey. Saint Nicholas was known for his generosity and kindness, especially toward children and the less fortunate. Stories of his secret gift-giving and anonymous acts of charity contributed to his reputation as a bringer of gifts. In the Middle Ages, Saint Nicholas became a popular figure in European folklore, particularly in Dutch tradition as Sinterklaas. The Dutch settlers brought their Sinterklaas traditions to America, where the name gradually transformed into Santa Claus. The American image of Santa Claus was further shaped by various influences, including Washington Irving's writings, the poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, commonly known as Twas the Night Before Christmas, published by Clement Clark Moore and the illustrations by Thomas Nast in the 19th century. The modern depiction of Santa Claus as a jolly, rotund figure dressed in a red suit with a white beard was solidified by Coca-Cola's popular advertising campaigns in the 1930s. Santa Claus embodies the spirit of gift-giving, generosity, and spreading joy, blending elements from different cultures and traditions throughout history to become a beloved figure associated with the Christmas holiday and many parts of the world. Although Christmas may have evolved from different places, one thing resonates through these various origins. Love. So even if your religious inclination or personal beliefs do not tally with Christmas, celebrate life and hope, and in all you do through this period, give love.